Have you heard mixed opinions about whole life insurance in the past? Earlier this week, I was speaking with an individual who is considering putting in over six figures per year into a whole life insurance policy. And he's doing that because he sees the benefits. He kind of has that wow moment to say, I didn't know you could do all of this with a whole life insurance policy. This is a fantastic product. However, years ago, he was pitched on the same whole life insurance product, but he looked at it and said, there's no way I'm going to put money into this thing. It's horrible. It takes over 10 years just to get my money back. So the question for me, if I'm the consumer, would be like, what's the difference? Why are there so many opinions out there about whole life insurance, specifically focusing on the cash value? And how do I make sure if I'm considering a policy that it is truly set up in my best interest, not the agent's best interest, not someone else's who thinks they have my best interest in mind or thinks this is how policy should be done. How do I maximize the cash value for me as the policyholder? I'm pretending I'm you. So I'm going to go through exactly what makes a good policy, what to look for, and how to set it up for maximum cash value. Let's have some fun. So when it comes to a whole life insurance policy, there are really two approaches one can take. The first is you can buy a policy, meaning you say, hey, I want a $1 million whole life insurance policy, and I give you a quote and state it's going to cost you $20,000 per year. That's the worst approach in my opinion. I much prefer the second approach, which is when you take a whole life insurance policy, did you know that you can actually choose where your money goes? At the end of the day, there are two areas in a whole life insurance policy where you can actually allocate your dollars. The first is is the insurance premium. This is often referred to as the base premium with the whole life insurance policy. And the second is referred to as a PUA. This stands for Paid Up Additions Rider. And how I translate the two is I'll often refer to as the the premium as the initial insurance expense and the PUA rider as a cash dump in. Here's why. Let's pretend for a moment that you are paying $1,000 per year toward the insurance premium piece of a life insurance policy. Premium dollars with respect to your cash value, often do not show up in cash value in the first year and sometimes the first and second year. Let's assume it's just year one for this example. Meaning if your premium is $1,000, $10,000, $100,000, whatever it might be, the premium piece does not show up in cash value in the first year. The reason why is that the insurance company is going to overcharge you for the death benefit up front. Depending on your age, that $1,000 premium may purchase you, call it $50,000 in actual whole life insurance death benefit. Now, as you continue to make premium payments, what you will find beginning the second year, that $1,000 shows up in cash value, begins to earn dividends and interest, the guaranteed rate, you can access the money and it gets better and better. However, the first year, that premium does not show up in cash value. Whereas the other area, the PUA component here, what I like to refer to as a cash dumping, if I pay the same $1,000 toward this component, guess what? I will see just about $1,000 show up in cash value right off the bat. Why I say just about $1,000 and not the full $1,000 is companies do have fees that are associated with this rider. To be specific, if I pay a thousand bucks in, I might see between 900 and 950 dollars in the cash value immediately. That begins to compound and quickly make up for the fee that the company assessed to it. But here's the point of attraction: money I pay toward this PUA rider is money I can access right away. Money that begins to earn the guaranteed rate right away. Money that begins to earn dividends. This is really the key to maximizing the cash value on a life insurance policy. Getting more money here toward this PUA component. Now you will find that PUA dollars do purchase you some life insurance. PUA represents paid up additions, meaning anytime I make a payment, I see it show up in cash value, but it purchases me paid up life insurance. Why I have the term paid up there is because these payments are optional. I can elect to add money to the, to the PUA rider or not add money to the PUA rider. 100% up to me. So 
A question we frequently get here is, hey, thanks for going through that, Steve. I don't really care about the death benefit. I'm interested in the cash value piece. How do I put 0% of my money into the premium and plow everything else into the PUA rider, maximizing the cash value from day one? And the answer is we cannot go quite that aggressive because there are limits that I need awareness around. So when it comes to limits that exist, there's really two limits that I want to, I want to have awareness on as a consumer, if, if you're considering a policy. The first is the insurance company limit. And what you'll find with some of the top companies, your four major mutual companies, a Mass Mutual, Guardian, New York Life, or Northwestern Mutual, I can typically 10x the minimum base premium. So what this means is if I had a $1,000 base premium, the company will often permit me to throw in another $9,000 per year into PUAs for a total of $10,000 per year. But I'm not committed to the full $10,000. So I can commit to the minimum premium of $1,000 and then add another $9,000 at my discretion, some companies permit that the adjustment or the additional funds are only added when my premiums do. Depends on the company and their flexibility terms. But typically you'll find, again with the top companies, that I can 10x my base premium. Why I emphasize that word, the top companies, is that some smaller companies allow you to exceed those 10x limitations. We do prefer the larger carriers, the four major mutual companies specifically, because we've seen them deliver the strongest actual cash values to policyholders. So first limit to be aware of is this 10X limitation. If I have a premium of $1,000, I can pay a total of $10,000 into the policy. If you said, hey Steve, I'd like the ability to pay in $100,000 per year, like the gentleman I mentioned earlier in this video, considering six figures per year going into a policy, well, in that particular case, he would want to set his minimum premium at guess what? $10,000. Squeeze the zero in there. This way he can 10X his minimum base premium and get a total of 100K per year into the policy. So first limit to be aware of is the insurance company limitation. The second limit, our friends at the IRS so any life insurance policy can become classified as this MEC, which represents Modified Endowment Contract. If a life insurance policy becomes classified as a MEC, the tax benefits that come along with the cash value are out the window. If my life insurance policy is not a MEC, I can access the cash value completely tax-free, very, very attractive to so many people in that respect, especially those in a higher income tax bracket because it's a safe, liquid, tax-free area to position money. Now, if your policy becomes classified as this modified endowment contract, what happens specifically is the cash value grows tax deferred, but anything you access with respect to the gains only, you have to pay ordinary income tax on the gains, and if I'm under the age of 59 and a half, I have to pay a 10% penalty tax. It's not fun at all. So how I prevent that MEC from occurring is every policy has what is called a MEC limit. And here's the fun part. You can tell I'm a true insurance nerd when I'm talking about these terms and how it's fun. The fun part is that you can actually set that limit wherever you want. What you'll find to be technical here is that the IRS really uses an individual's age and total death benefit on a life insurance policy. Think of that as the measuring stick that the IRS uses to determine if a life insurance policy is viewed as life insurance in their eyes or a pure taxable investment. So I do need to be aware of that really as the agent, but as a, from a consumer standpoint, it is good to have awareness really around the fact that you can set that MEC limit wherever you want. If you ever hear, hey, you can't have a policy with this much cash value because it'll mech, I would question it a bit further, mainly because we can set that mech limit wherever we want and it's very easy to prevent. So let's look at some numbers that specifically speak to the policy design piece here. So what we've got here is first the example on the left, a traditional policy. What I mean when I say that is just a policy where the individual purchases a death benefit, he pays 100K per, per year, a 100% base premium, meaning of his $100,000, every penny of it 
is directed toward the premium. Remember the two areas? In red, we had the premium. In blue, we had the PUA rider. Everything's going into premium. Here's this cash value in the first year. Not quite a zero, but it doesn't look that good. He pays in $100,000 and has about $3,600 to show for it. This is based on a 50-year-old male with one of the major mutual companies. As he continues to make the, the $100,000 per year payment, what do we notice? He pays into it for 10 years up until the age, age of 60, total of a million bucks in. It's not until year 11 when he finally sees more than a million dollars in cash value. That's a long time to break even. And that's assuming that the company's crediting rate stays exactly where it is, where it will likely come down for a little bit. Now, what's interesting about this is on the far right, you've got the exact same company, exact same policy, exact same out-of-pocket for the individual, but designed a bit differently, or I should say much differently. Same out-of-pocket, the $100,000 per year, but where is the money going? Your money can go toward the premium, or toward PUAs. Here's the premium, $10,000. We do have other riders attached to this policy, term insurance riders and such, which if you have questions on that, we've got other video content that goes into detail. But basically what you'll see here, minimum premium, minimum expenses, right off the bat, we've got over 80% of our payment and cash value. And that can be higher with different products as well. But look at this, exact same company, there's your cash value difference on day one, $78,000 in more value where the out-of-pocket payment is identical to the consumer. So if you're interested in a whole life insurance policy specifically for cash value, this is the kind of stuff I want awareness around so I make the right decision and don't find out after the fact. Look at some other things here. My break even, what this yellow represents is when I have more money in cash value than what I paid into it. So by year five, I've paid in half a million dollars and I have half a million. That is $110,000 more than the example on the left with the 100% insurance premium example. As I look at age 60, what do you notice here? Almost one and a quarter million, $234,000 more in this example compared to the traditional policy. Now, there are many different ways to design a policy, but this just provides a quick overview on how to design a policy for maximum cash value. If you enjoyed it, please check out our YouTube channel, subscribe for more, and as always, I hope this helps. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.